also the effects of access management techniques on wrong way driving. This presentation will be presented by Dr. Hugo Zhou. He's a professor at Civil Engineering Department at Auburn University. He graduated in 2001 from University of South Florida with PhD in Transportation Engineering. Then he worked for Parson Brinkroft for a few years. He also worked for Center for Urban Transportation Research called Cutter for five years. He started as an associate professor with Southern Illinois University in 2008 and moved to Auburn University in 2013. Please join me welcoming Dr. Hugo Joe. Thank you for introduction. I started this uh, runway project uh, in uh, two, 2009 when I was in uh, Southern Illinois University. So the uh, IDOT uh, supported a research project at that time. So, uh, and then uh, when I moved to uh, uh, Auburn University, so the LDOT also have same issues. So I'm, I've been working on several projects for, for LDOT. So today my presentation is focused on access management uh, techniques, uh, not uh, sign and uh, uh, traffic control device. So uh, the, a few couple uh, years ago, maybe one year ago, we found uh, several locations uh, in Alabama. The before, uh, when we look at the runway crash, the, the conclusion is like this. Uh, there is no runway driver, it's all drunk driver. So because when you look at the crash data, uh, over 50% runway crash is confirmed by the DUI driver. So, uh, the, there's a, so basically you cannot find the, uh, the high crash location because one loca if you see one location has a one or two runway crash over the last five years, that's already a lot, okay? But you never see any location have more than more than that. So my question is, can we find a location has a lot of wrong way instant? Because long way, wrong way instant data is very difficult to collect. Uh, so this is one location. I first time when I see the videos, uh, as in the North Birmingham, I-65 and uh, 284, and this location. Uh, we record 35 hour videos and we found about 16 uh, wrong way instant uh, over just one weekend. So, uh, so then I asked my student, hey, can you uh, check all these high crash locations, see how they looks like? And can we develop a mathematical model to identify this location automatically? So this is called a network screening method that we typically use for the uh, highway safety menu, uh, we typically do that. So now last year he developed a model for diamond interchange and this year is Paco Leave interchange. Uh, so this can help you identify top 10 location in your own states. Uh, and uh, also divided highway, uh, one of my students has a poster uh, presentation over there, uh, identify uh, possible the why people driving wrong way on the divided highway. Uh, that's very interesting and this is a location uh, very close to Auburn University. When I, when I teach the geometry design class, we have a temp project. Several students do the temp project on the how to reduce wrong way driving. And the one time a student come to see me, he said, Dr. Zhou, I see people driving wrong way intentionally during the afternoon peak hour. I said, there's no way people can do that. This is uh, US 280, very close to the Auburn University. And that intersection, you can tell why people keep going wrong way because that's, uh, uh, they don't want to go downstream to make a U-turn come back. This is a shortcut uh, for like 150 feet, maybe uh, the down. Because the driveway has so long the queue during the peak hour, so they cannot get back on that uh, driveway to, to make a uh, left. So a lot of people do this. Uh, it's about, uh, you see the 15 people doing this over uh, a, thir a weekend, okay? So, and the speed limit for this roadway is very high, 65 mile per hour. Uh, so that's a very uh, dangerous maneuvers for the, for the situation like this. 
So this is a video on the YouTube. If you have my uh, slides, I don't think I can show it here, but you click that uh, link, you, you can see the, all the confirmed uh, runway instant uh, at this uh, location. So for today's presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, runway crash hist history in uh, uh, Alabama, uh, some existing the design guides uh, on the geometry design or access management, and the different runway potential movement at the different interchange. And finally, what are the access management techniques may have an impact on runway uh, driving? Okay. The last is uh, some proven wrong with uh, access management techniques. Okay, uh, this is uh, national data from 2004 to 2011. Uh, show the total uh, fatalities keep going down, uh, as we can see from uh, 2004 to 2011. But the red one is a wrong way fatal crash, uh, keep steady. Uh, the total number has not been followed the same trend as uh, other f uh, fatal crash. So actually increased a little bit, okay. So the national picture, I see the Wisconsin is below 1% of fatal crash. You guys are under the very low, uh, low uh, risk uh, states, I would say. If, if the wrong way fatal crash, more than 2% of total fatal crash, that's we we marked as a, a high higher category, uh, one to two percent is a uh, is a middle. So they see that the southern uh, Florida, Texas, California, uh, the both has a, probably they have those three states has the highest one. Uh, uh, Texas probably has the highest one in terms of total uh, mileage traveled. I would say maybe a lot of frontage road. I, I don't know. It's, so the, uh, some uh, issues, uh, we just talk about access management issues uh, in uh, Alabama. And we have a lot of driveways very close, located very close to uh, off-ramp. Uh, this one is located, you show the, uh, it's probably exit ramp, this fresh median, uh, only 175 feet. Uh, so, and only 30% of the location has a, a raised median. Uh, and the channelized island, uh, very few has a race curve channelized island. Okay, some uh, existing guideline, I want to show you uh, the Ashto Green Book, you can see uh, from chapter 10, 9.5, that's maybe two page uh, on the how to uh, discourage, uh, discourage wrong way driving. Uh, that's uh, 2011. The ESA developed this uh, guideline for emerging uh, safety countermeasures for runway driving. Uh, I, I helped them put this together uh, in the 2004. Uh, that's, this is a case study book, just show some uh, countermeasures implemented by some uh, states and what's the uh, that results, okay. And I thought, uh, I help IDOT to put this uh, design, the guideline for reduced runway driving crash on freeways uh, in the 2014. So this one uh, include uh, chapter two, mainly signage, uh, payment marking. Chapter three uh, is the geometry design elements. Chapter four is advanced technology. So in the other states, uh, may, uh, Washington, Washington State has a uh, policy on the intersection balance. I found that's uh, something uh, very uh, useful. I, I thought Illinois Department of Transportation also have some detailed design guide for the turning radius for the Paco Leave interchange. So the, uh, the access management techniques example can be used uh, race median, uh, control radius, channelizing island. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is a race curve median can prevent uh, a lot of wrong way left hand movement. So as you can see from this location, and this area, it looks brand new, right? It's an extension of the uh, race curve median. 
And this is, uh, can help prevent all the ref 10 runway maneuver. And we found that a lot of uh, runway entry is caused by left turn. Uh, uh, this is left turning runway maneuver. So extension this uh, is very uh, effective as a low cost. So that's a one uh, example use. And the uh, uh, medium barrier uh, can also help. This is the trumpet uh, interchange uh, separate the two direction traffic. And this is a bad example about the medium barrier. When I mention medium barrier, and you see that this, this example in the Michigan, they uh, install this uh, guardrail between on and off ramp. So the left-hand vehicle try to enter the entrance ramp. ramp. And uh, we found, well, example for this, extend too far away to the, behind the stall bar. So almost block the view for the left-hand driver to see entrance ramp. And uh, there's a similar location in Alabama and build a concrete barrier between on and off ramp. And that's a location we found 16 runway entries uh, over one weekend. So, so this may need to push back, open up the uh, entrance ramp. Uh, if you have a location like this in your state, you may want to uh, check if there's a uh, potential uh, runway uh, driving. So uh, some other things, uh, this is more detail about uh, turning radius. Uh, for example, for the off-ramp turning ra radius, try to uh, tangent to uh, middle of the, uh, the median, not tangent to the, uh, the edge of roadway. Do not tangent to the edge of roadway. Okay. Well, Channelized Island seems like a very useful way uh, to uh, reduce the width of uh, off-ramp. Uh, but there is one location, this one need to use carefully. Uh, my student just tell me uh, we did the before after study for one location and the before has a 10 runway entry, but after you install this channelized island, runway entry number increase. Okay, it's not reduced. We need to find out what's the reason. Because in Alabama, we have two locations. Uh, we have a, each location have more land, more than 10 runway entry uh, over a weekend. So they start to implement the different uh, low cost kind of measures. So we are working on evaluate uh, how this will affect. But one location implement this channelized island, actually wrong way driving increase. Uh, so, <clears throat> this is example from the Ashto uh, Green Book about uh, two lane uh, cross design for diamond interchange. This is divided uh, cross road design for diamond interchange. I, I did, uh, I look this design type, I did find exactly same examples in the, in, in the, in the uh, real world, follow same design like this. Not everyone follow, most of not, but you can find one. The, use the area photo, you see exactly like, like those, uh, not, not many. Uh, but those strategies should be, uh, I would say, very effective to uh, prevent uh, runway driving uh, in, at diamond interchange. So that's an example, uh, good design for the, for the diamond interchange. You have uh, all the things I just mentioned. Uh, this is a turning radius tangent to the center of roadway, not edge of the uh, roadway and the channelized island and the race curve median. Uh, so that this will make a uh, wrong way left turn very, uh, very difficult for typical diamond interchange. So uh, for the some, uh, when we look the wrong way crash data, we look the common entry point it's very difficult to find, to confirm the runway entry point. They probably you may see 10 or 15% of runway crash has confirmed the runway entry point. So 
but we, we found a way to uh, assign entry point for all the runway crash. And uh, the typically, the entering from exit ramp is uh, very confirmed most of for, for that uh, condition. And across mid end and the U-turn on the freeway, and we try to exclude, exclude those uh, type of the uh, entry point from study. Uh, the Paco Reeve interchange was found. This is uh, um, the most uh, uh, attractive to the runway driving type of crash. Okay, especially you have a two-way ramp, uh, exit entrance ramp next to each other. So this table just show you how we rank different type of interchange. You see the, the first one is called a Paco Reeve interchange, rank as number one. How we rank it, we use the confirmed entry point and the, we may use the first estimate entry point. The based on the runway crash location, we look upstream uh, which interchange is possible first entry point because the runway driving typically cannot drive longer distance. So we, we, we found the first and the second estimate entry point and they assign different weight. The first one assigned 0.5, the second one assigned 0.25. So then we add all these together and they divide by number of interchange in the state you have. So then you get a percentage, like every 100 this type of interchange, how many runway entry you have for last five years. That's how we rank different type of interchange. Uh, sometimes we have a lot of diamond interchange, but you may see a lot of crash, but the, the, your rate may be lower than the Paco leave because, because that depends on number of the uh, interchange you have. So this study, uh, access management for Paco leave, we focus on the partial curve leave interchange, and this is a design guide in the IDOT design menu and show the uh, turning radius uh, for, the, for the left hand in and the left hand out are 100 feet and, uh, and 80 feet coming in. Uh, and this is a good design for the uh, Paco Leave interchange. Okay, they follow similar design guide. You see the turning radius, uh, channelizing island, uh, race, curve, race median, uh, so So after we look at this one, and we try to uh, see, uh, w when we look at all the guidelines, we didn't see a lot of scientific study to support those guidelines. A lot of guidelines is uh, there's no, uh, we look at the reference, there's no crash study or anything on that. So we decided to look at the crash data we collect from Illinois uh, is 10 years and five years in Alabama. And they use all these crash data, try to do some uh, uh, study to see which uh, techniques actually has a significant impact on the runway driving crash. So, so those are the list we uh, select, control radius, median type, uh, median width, and the intersection balance, uh, and the distance for the, to the access point uh, near the interchange. And the intersection angle, channelized island, was removed from the model because they are not significant. So top five, and we actually uh, used it in the, in the model inside. So this one, like, like I mentioned, the uh, IDOT design guide uh, used those uh, 80, 100, the median width uh, is about 50 feet uh, required. That's 50 feet here uh, in that minimum for the uh, Paco leaf on and off ramp. So uh, this is the crash data we use. Uh, we select 172 uh, two-way ramp uh, on, in the Illinois and Alabama, and at 97 Paco leaf interchange. The total 65 runway crash uh, from 54 location. Uh, that's a uh, uh, that not all the location has a wrong way crash, only 54 out of 172. So use the uh, uh, logistic regression model uh, to use the odds ratio as a uh, measure of effective. So this is a, a logistic regression results to show the, the control radius. Uh, you see the 
you remember the control radius in the IDOT design menu, say more than 80 feet. Uh, but our data analysis showed uh, uh, after 80 feet, uh, that are for have runway entry significant increase. Uh, it's a 4.667 uh, compare 50 or, or, or less reference points. <laughs> for the type of median, uh, if you change from uh, transversible to non-transversible, uh, transversible is going to double up your risk for runway entry. Uh, so uh, for the median width, uh, my, the data show that more than 30 feet is going to significantly reduce the chance for runway entry. Uh, but for the you know, IDOT menu, it says 50 feet. So that 30 feet uh, is already can make a big difference. Uh, so the access point, uh, the, the data show that if the more than 600 feet, the first driveway to the exit ramp terminal, uh, more than 600 feet can significantly reduce the, uh, the risk for, for runway entry. So this is just the general data analysis uh, the, my student now is just finished the modeling for the park leave interchange. So that basically the model can give you the, you, if you select any uh, off-ramp terminal, park leave interchange, you input all the requirement elements. The model can give you the percentage, that's a risk for the uh, runway entry. So if you get more than the top 10 location in Alabama, is about uh, the highest one is 80% uh, the risk. The lowest one maybe the tenth location maybe 50%. So what we did, we tried to verify that model and we used the camera to monitor this top 10 location for over a weekend, 48 hours. So four of these locations had at least one runway entries over a weekend. Two locations had more than 10 uh, runway entries for the for over a weekend, so so that that probably verify means uh, the model can help you uh, identify the high risk location. The reason we do that is uh, because we we believe the uh, the design features attract runway drive entries are similar. So so if you can you know uh, mod model these kind of features and then you can identify the location looks similar uh, uh, to, the, uh, to attract, attract runway uh, entry. So, and another thing, this is uh, Washington State DLT, uh, the intersection balance. Uh, this is what I found uh, is very interesting. We see a lot of intersection when we design a special off-ramp in the Chicago, they have like four or five lane on off-ramp. Only one lane on the entrance ramp. So the very unbalanced intersection, and for those uh, left-hand vehicle, it's very difficult for them to actually see where is the on-ramp, okay? Uh, so the Washington DOT design guide mentioned this balance should not no more than 60% of entire length of intersection. Uh, so this is an example in uh, Illinois. I found this location is very unbalanced. You see the off-ramp, they put the two channelized <laughs> median on the off-ramp, separate the same direction traffic. Uh, that's one, one, the through traffic, right turn, and these here, all the way back here, left turn on-ramp, they have, it's very difficult for this vehicle to see where is the entrance ramp, okay? So I, I had a student to monitor this location, found the two runway instant over a weekend, and this location had more than one confirmed runway crash over five years, okay? Uh, so it's easy solution. This left turn can move up because you have a race curve channelized and it can move up all the way here and then reduce the, the distance for, for left turn, uh, reduce the intersection balance for, for the, this location. And also, the, then I, I, I did this study to look at all the uh, 
intersection balance at these different uh, Parker Lee inter, uh, intersection and see uh, how the uh, wrong, wrong way crash distribute uh, among different intersections if they have a different balance. So when the intersection has a very good balance, like 50%, their wrong way crash rate actually very low. Uh, when this increase actually very high, but we have very small uh, sample size. Uh, so another study we did use the GPS because I got the email from someone, the public agency for the transit agency. They said sometimes the GPS will tell the driver going wrong way and uh, uh, give them a uh, misguide. Uh, uh, so we did uh, use the latest GPS device, the app, uh, Apple map, Google map, and the several uh, latest model for the three latest model for the uh, GPS. Uh, we tried the 10 uh, interchange with closed side street in Alabama. Uh, make uh, uh, the student do the field trip to go to set up your destination here. And you drive from here. And if the GPS tell you make a right turn before the exit ramp, we call that, uh, may, that information may misguide you turn right to the exit ramp. So if that happened, we'll count how many times, times that happened. And, uh, and how, what's the distance between these two uh, may cause that. So uh, when the distance is more than 600 feet, the chance wrong information will be very low. But we found if less than 100 feet, you almost 100% of the time get wrong information from GPS, okay? Uh, 100 feet if you locate the less, less short distance. Okay. So at the end, these are the some uh, I call the uh, proven uh, AM techniques may help reduce wrong way uh, entry. Uh, we call it wrong way incident. Uh, small crossing road, uh, corner road radius 80 feet, uh, less than 80 feet. And the non-transversible cross median can reduce chance by uh, half. Okay. Uh, race median, the ramp uh, median width more than 30 feet uh, can reduce that uh, uh, wrong way entry uh, possibility. So intersection balance less than uh, 60%. Okay. And the last one is the access point. Uh, more than six, six, 600 feet uh, can reduce those uh, potential wrong way entry. So uh, that's additional information about GPS, less than 100 feet. You almost get all the, uh, the, the misguide from, from a GPS device. 600 feet will be a, a optimal distance. Some uh, bad design uh, examples, a diamond interchange, okay. Use the transversible median. The corner, people did design this. This turning radius, you tangent to the edge of roadway. It's not mid of the uh, mid of roadway, okay. Acute uh, intersection angle. This is some uh, not good examples for the diamond interchange. You see that uh, transversible median, uh, corner radius, uh, acute uh, intersection angle. And this is some uh, good design examples, okay? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a good e design examples. Okay, that's another one, uh, very similar to the Arch2 design, design the guy. Okay, that's uh, my presentation. If you have any question. Mm -hmm. so in order to notify the police 
police, law mm. enforcement for wrong way driving just to prevent accidents on freeways. Mm -hmm. So you, you're talking about the street lighting uh, like impact? How, um, on, uh, on an off ramp when someone gets on a wrong way on a ramp to get uh -huh. on a freeway. Uh -huh. I've heard there are some measure, safety measures such as lighting which starts flashing uh -huh. and it notifies the police. I, I tell you, uh, that's, that's, I know Florida, many other states too in the uh, fresh in uh, Beacon, but based on the data I collect, the video, 100% of we driver not realize they are going wrong way, uh, just based on the traditional sign and the payment marking. And the, 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 the worst scenario, there's a headline for the, for the right way driver. There's several people stop by the, they see the headline of right way driver coming, they realize they're going wrong way. So, uh, I don't know, the fresh and fresh beacon thing, uh, maybe for the, that's another issue, for the drunk driver. So wrong way driving study may focus on two parts. I will say 30% uh, is a good driver. Maybe they can stop by the traditional. But for the drunk driver, that, that's, you need an additional study to see what kind of the uh, uh, device can stop drunk driver. Is it flashing? Sometimes drunk drivers see some start fresh, they will drive faster. They, will, they, will, they don't know what's going on. So, uh, so this is why we, we, we did, we, we've been working on a study for the uh, directional rumble strip, try to create some kind of the vibration uh, to, the, to the impaired driver, and if they uh, get alert more to start to pay attention to uh, wrong way arrows on the pavement, and maybe uh, or traditional sign can help. Uh, in Alabama, we focus on the low cost kind of measures, payment marking and the uh, wrong way arrow, uh, maybe some uh, rumble strip. Uh, the one location we did, uh, we found the 16 wrong way entry, that location, they start to implement some kind of measures. The first low cost they implement is the payment marking to, to, to put the, refresh payment marking, put the yellow dot for the, to guide the left turn to the entrance ramp. So that's very low cost. What we found during the nighttime, the before we have eight people going wrong way, but after that nighttime, zero, okay, zero. But the daytime we have eight before, after that still eight. No change. So people say lighting can help reduce wrong way driving. So I was like, hey, wait a minute. This is nighttime, total reduced by just payment marking guide because during nighttime, your headline hit, hit on the payment. That's your driver focus. So your payment marking very good to guide your, make a maybe difficult left turn. They will follow that. But during the daytime, driver may see too many things. They may not focus on that much on the, on the payment. They see the entire looks like what looks like on, on ramp. So, but that's a, that location is, looks so like on ramp, the off ramp looks, so the daytime still no change. So that, 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 that location has a no race curb median. They may need to put the quick curb or race curb median can reduce that daytime. Uh, wrong way entry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.